Hey, welcome or welcome back to Babe and Library. It's your girl Lisa, and I am prepping for Novellathon. So, what that is, is a readathon hosted by four of my faves. So, you've got Samantha at Books with Samantha, you've got Rachel from Rachel Reads and Sings, you have Avery from Ava's Romance Books, and you have Tiffany from Tiff Talk Pages on Booktube or Neverland Pixie on Bookstagram. So they are hosting this novellathon from Monday, February 6th to, I believe, Sunday, uh, February 12th. And it has 10 different prompts. So the prompts are going to be listed on the screen. You have a book under 100 pages, something that's on Kindle Unlimited, a red or pink cover, BIPOC author, monster and or paranormal, alien or holiday, favorite trope or part of a series. So... I've got quite a lot of books. Um, I've got my physicals here. A lot of these are going to be just in case I'm ready to mood read. And then I've got a couple that are definite staples because they've been on my Kindle and I'm ready to like read through what I own. So as far as my prompts, um, before I get into what I am actually choosing, I will say if you're looking for a series, one that I've already read, um, I would suggest Set by Andrea uh, Alexandria House. Um, I read this. This was a part of my fourth quarter wrap up. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below. Absolutely love this. This is about the Mitchell brothers. Uh, the first brother being um, Set, who is the middle child. Absolutely adored. Five out of five stars if you need a recommendation. But as far as what I will be reading for my paranormal, I'm going to read Blood Moon by Jillian Graves. So this is probably one of the first ones that I'm going to pick up. Also going to read for my Kindle Unlimited, I am going to read again by J.L. Seegers. I just finished Restored Me last month and I am dying to read more of J.L. Seegers. So I'm going to definitely pick up again. For my book in a series, I'm going to read Pink Slip by Katrina Jackson. This is the first in a spy series that has a polyamorous romance. So I'm going to read that. Um, as far as my holiday book, I'm going to read Don't Ever Wonder by Takiya Lattimore. Uh, it is a Valentine's Day trope. I also have another book for Valentine's Day as a holiday, but it is it has a red cover. So I'm going to read Sticky Situations by Chaslyn Hamilton. Um, for my monsters, I'm going to read, of course, Muscles and Monsters by Ashley Bennett. Uh, for my book under 100 pages, I'm going to read Protect and Slay by Wintertime. It is a single parent um, trope. For BIPOC, a lot of my books are by Black authors because it's Black History Month and I'm a Black reader, so I'm trying to read as much as I can. But I'm going to read it Egypt's Interlude by Jashan Dreams for that specific trope. And then... For uh, my favorite type of trope, I'm going to read Temptation by Chiquita Denning. If that's not enough, I think I might pick up The Vow by D. Rose, which is a marriage of convenience. Um, if I have more time on my hand, I may read Open Water by Kayla Azuma Nelson. And then I will also try to pick up Continuum by Daniel Allen. Um, so that is what all I have on my plate for this week. I've got a lot of time to kind of get through these in their novella, so they're really quick. So stay tuned to see me read some of these and hear my initial thoughts. See you soon. Hey y'all, it is time for my first check-in for the novellathon. I decided to pick up Muscles and Monsters by Ashley Bennett for the monster trope, and I gave it a four and a half star. I've seen a lot of people loving and ranting about this, but I had to pick it up for myself to see if I would like it. This was awesome. I will tell you that Ashley Bennett is an amazing writer. To be able to compact so much in 174 pages blew my mind. Not only do you have the steam and the the spice um, with a lot of tropes, right? So you've got discussion of voyeurism, not necessarily on page, but you also have um, the praise kink. You've got primal play. There's so much there, but there's also a lot of really good discussion about emotions and trauma. So you will get to see Atlas, who is the main male character. He is woven. I will tell you that he is amazing at displaying his emotion and being in touch with his softer side, which again, seems pretty contradictory for a wolf, but I think that's what Ashley was going for. And then you've got Tegan, who is a plus size heroine, who is confident and in love with her body and really deciding to go into the gym for her. Um, to gain her strength for her business. 
I think you get to see a really good dynamic. There is faded mates trope um, that isn't brought into the discussion until much later, right? So it's not an instant love. It starts off as lust and then it works its way and builds into that emotional connection that turns into faded mates. I will say I like that Ashley decided to dig a little bit deeper in this relationship and make sure to talk about really heavy topics, um, but doing it in a funny and witty way. Um, you get to see that there's discussion about body positivity as well as what it's like to be in a toxic relationship where your partner is demeaning and derogatory to you. You get to talk about situations in which um, there are stereotypes, right? So we talk about stereotypes of rich people. We talk about the stereotypes of monsters. So I really like that Ashley wasn't shy. I didn't feel like anything was rushed. Um, and I can't wait for the next in the series. So, So I just finished again by JL Seekers for my Kindle Unlimited pick and per her MO, she hit me right in the feels. This is a second chance romance, um, second time at love for Amina and her ex-husband Jackson. Um, they were married for eight years before they went through a number of different situations that caused the the breakup of their marriage and when I tell you this hits because there is content warning for um, attempts at IVR and the inability to be pregnant um, cheating potentially so there's so much that's compacted into 128 pages um, and as you know, JL Seeger is, is not only going to bring you the emotion but she's also going to bring you a spice um, Amina and Jackson have tried to steer clear of each other. They had a, a divorce in which they decided to custody of the people that they love, which is their brother and sister, who, when I say their brother and sister, I mean Lyric is Amina's sister and Rob is Jackson's brother. And they are getting married. So they are coming together for the marriage of their family and... This is the first time they're going to be spending copious amounts of time together. And of course, that's going to bring up feelings. They hit, they hit the feelings. I had to like compose myself multiple times so I did not tear up. But it's funny. It's swoon worthy. It's everything that you can know and expect from JL Seegers. And I think you all saw that as I was reading the book. So... I'm debating on what I want to give it. There are some things that, as it wrapped up, I was a little uneasy about. It's definitely at least a four, four and a half star. I know it's not a five star for me um, as compared to Restore Me, but that no, that means that I'm just going to go in to revive me once I finish Novellathon and figure out what's her next five star. So till the next hey time. Hey y'all, I am back for a check-in for Novellathon and I've just finished two books. So the first book I finished was Blood Moon by Jillian Graves. This is for the paranormal trope. 
Um, I was gifted this by Jillian Graves, so I'm thankful to be able to have a physical copy. However, um, I rated this a two star. So this didn't necessarily hit the mark that I thought it would. This is a Rivals to Lovers romance. Um, Hazel, our female main character, is a witch. And she owns a little nightclub or bar named Witch Hazel, which is a cute name for her establishment. And her competition is a vampire from across the way named Vladimir. Now, Vladimir isn't the owner of the club. He is just the manager. And so he's dealing with a like parent corporation that has given him money. His real dream is to turn his establishment, the Black Door, into something cute and cozy, similar to the Witch Hazel. In his mind, he's not really in competition. He is simply just providing another avenue for the, his consumers. And Hazel pretty much takes this to heart, right? She's had this company or this, this business for quite some time and had a handle on the market. And here comes the Black Door stealing all of her customers and then pressing her um, patrons. So what does she do but kind of go out of her way to kind of put him out of business? And what she doesn't know is who he is at the time of their meet cute. So she is having a little bit of a down on her luck day and she talks to her high priestess and she's like, hey, do you've got something that I can take to kind of clear my mind, get it off of the drama? And she's like, of course, sure, I got something for you. Just go in the shower, wash all over your body, you'll feel better. And so what happens is she comes across Vladimir or he stumbles into the bathroom trying to get away from someone and they have steamy times in the shower. And then they get introduced later at the party and she realizes the man that she just had this um, rendezvous with is her competition. And ever since then, they're finding ways to take out one another. I would say that for me, I wish this had a lot more backstory or plot. There was something missing. Even in the steamy times, I wish that I got you know, just a bit more. And I know this is a novella, so sometimes you can't necessarily feel a lot in the plot. However, I just felt like we were always on the brink of something good and we we never got it. It was just like the shell or an outline for me of a story. Um, maybe if Jillian had more time, she could have expounded this. The I mean, second novella that I read, which was by Nicole Falls, um, and this is going to be for my novella that's under 100 pages. And that is Fucking Fall in Love. So I'm going to tell you right now, as I just said, Blood Moon needed more pages. Fucking Fall in Love did not need any more. It was whole in its short content. I tell it that was a five star for me in a short amount of pages. It is very similar to set. Um, and I recommended this at the beginning of the video. It's very similar to this set in regards to this is like a meet in a different city, travel back and forth one and up to one another romance. Um, the main characters are Nigel and Jane. This is about a couple where we get to meet them and it's kind of like a one night stand or um, strangers to lovers trope. So Jane is sent by her sister-in-law who is the owner, her boss. Um, she sends her out of town for a convention and she is alone for dinner. This guy who we come to find out is Nigel, orders her a drink from the bar. And she's like, okay, I'm gonna take this drink, I'm gonna relax, and I'm gonna go thank him. And she blinks and he's gone. And so she's like, hmm, that's weird. So then later on that night, she can't go to sleep. So she goes up to the top of the bar to get another drink. And who's there but Nigel? He is the bouncer for that evening. And she starts to get these drinks in her. They, the, the alcohol starts flowing and she then propositions him to come down to her hotel room before she leaves uh, town just for, you know, for her to properly thank them, him. And when I tell you, it was game on from there, but it goes in months, like, or quarters rather. So you may meet them in April and again in June and then again in November, then again in February, right? So it, it's going on a every so often as they travel back and forth to see one another, get to see the growth in the progression in their relationship until you get to see it happily ever after. So I loved that, again, five star. It's my first five star of this novellathon. Hey, y'all, it's time for my final check-in for the novellathon. I was able to read six books in total. 
Um, this what ha this novellathon had high highs and surprising lows. So I decided to extend my novellathon reading vlog for an additional day. So today is Monday and I felt like I needed to do that because I was in the middle of one book and I was like, okay, I'm 75% of the way through. Just give me some extra time to, to wrap it up. And I did. Um, my book that I needed to get extra time on was Pink Slip by Katrina Jackson. Um, I rated this a two star. Unfortunately, this is kind of ending my vlog experience on a down note, uh, but that's okay because I've had two four and a half stars, one five star. So I'll take a two star um, if that means I got to find some new favorites. But Pink Slip is a polyamorous fake dating romance storyline. You've got Kiera, who is a secretary to a mirrored spy couple. Um, she has been lusting after the couple since she started working for them three years ago. And they take her on a mission right before she puts her final notice in um, because she can't take that she wants to be with this couple and having to experience those emotions for what she believes is by herself. Um, so she just feels like it's time for her to call it quits and to pursue other passions in life, such as writing. Um, however, when they take her on this mission, um, this is the first time that they all kind of give in to the attraction that's been building over the last three years. The mission leads them overseas and where they are going undercover as a polyamorous couple because they have to spy on a Serbian mafia um, kingpin. And he has very specific interest and taste in which they have to align with. And one of the things that I found interesting is that this had an additional plot, right? So it wasn't just about their them getting into a relationship. However, I will tell you the longer I spent with these characters, the more in which I became a little annoyed with their dynamics. Uh, one thing I will say is Kira felt like she was more invested and interested in Monica and often I would find that Lane was kind of just a side character or he would be there for entertainment and I didn't feel the true uh, relationship dy dynamic spread evenly or distribute evenly and I didn't necessarily care for that right. Um, I felt like Lane kind of stepped in as a shtick character. Um, in, in terms of he was there for comedic relief and to bring a different element of the relationship, but he never really truly um, was able to break the bond between Monica and Kiera. Um, another thing is Kiera started to annoy me. Granted, she is a civilian in um, the, the, the working field that they're in. However, I would find sometimes she would just be selfish in the things in which she decided to bring up and pick up on the danger that she would be in on the mission and you continue to put yourself in danger. So um, I would say if Katrina had shortened this to the relationship ending right when they all culminated and got together, I probably would have rated this much higher. However, um, I did fall in love with one of the characters named Shantae and I went to go check Goodreads to see when or if she would be getting her story uh, and it wasn't until book six and it was a prequel right so not even her true love story which means that I just I know I won't be finishing this series. Um, and then the final book that I read um, today would be Coming Home by Kennedy Ryan. Uh, that is a quick novella that's uh, available on Audible only. Um, that was an HBCU kind of second chance friends to lovers romance in which Naomi and Torre had shared a passionate kiss one night back in college, but they really didn't get a chance to explore their feelings. Now it's 20 years later, he has a daughter who is in the attending the college in which they graduated and she is now homecoming queen. So he goes in support of his daughter um, and meets Naomi there and this is where they get to rekindle their relationship. Now, I rated this a three star simply because it we didn't have enough time to a little bit of that angst and pining that we're used to seeing from Kennedy Ryan because we wanted to get this done and over with fairly quickly. I will say I also wish that this had a lot more of the 
environmental scene from an HBCU experience. So while I appreciate Kennedy Ryan for, um, you know, taking a step in that direction, I just wish that I would have gotten a little bit more from this. But all in all, I really did enjoy my time with the Novellathon. I will say I hope that the hosts will host it again. Um, because I think I stumbled upon some great finds and I was able to knock them out quickly. So if you have um, participated in the Novellathon and you want to share with me what your favorite read was, please drop it down below in the chat. And if you could, because this is the only book I have in front of me, leave a pink heart emoji or leave some sort of pink symbol, whether that's a flower or anything that you can find as an emoji pink, leave it in the chat below and I'll speak to you all next time. Bye.